one. All right, we're going to continue with exercise one. What do I do to open the project? It's a new class day. I find my class folder. I open it up. My class folder is nicely organized. We only have one folder in there so far. It's exercise one. Open that up. And what I look for amongst all my references is my PSD file. That stands for Photoshop document. It means that they, it supports multiple layers. Now, I don't want to just double click this yet because we're not working in Photoshop yet. Instead, I want to use the freeware that we're learning, which is in the assignment, photop.com. And I can always just type in photop.com. I'm not going to log in, I'm not going to do anything too fancy. I'm just going to drag and drop. This is why I don't use full screen, so I can always have access to my desktop. Drag and drop my PSD right there. Or I can say open from computer and navigate the search to find it. Now, what's the important thing? I haven't looked at this for a week. I need to see what my layers are. And that is why this PSD file is so important. So you can have separate layers you can work on. The requirements of this exercise are that you use at least five different layers. We turn them all into black line art, and then we turn them into our own composition. So we don't just take the references as they are. You'll notice that this reference, these music notes look pretty much exactly like this. And I don't want to just leave it like that. I want to make it my own composition. So let's do it layer by layer. I'm going to zoom in on the tools so you can see that a little bit better. And then this is often what I do with Photop. I just push off the ads, <laughs> especially in class videos. I don't like free advertising even though Oreos are delicious. All right, so I have not tried frozen Oreos. That could be good. So I'm going to turn off just the eyeball. That's very different than deleting the layer. It means I can't see it. So I'm isolating to just one layer. And you can see I rotated it, but I can change this a lot more. And in order to change it, especially to get rid of the gray and the color and the white to get to clean black line art, I have to first rasterize it. So to rasterize means to change it from just being uh, pixels that are referenced in an external file. That's what's called a smart object. I need to, to save these pixels into this program as things that I've chosen to augment. So to do that, you see the little black box in your layer preview window? That little black box, black square in the lower right corner means it's a smart object, it means it's referencing the outside file that you dragged in. To break that connection and rasterize it to pixels you can edit, you need to right click and then say rasterize. And then you'll see that that box will go away. Now I can do things like use the magic wand. The tolerance 16 is fine. In Photoshop, the default tolerance is 32. That's just how close they need to be. I'm going to go ahead and up that to 32. And I'm just going to click on the white. And then I'm going to hit delete. Now, it might look like it got rid of everything except the black. But I can see that the gray is still there. Right? Even some of these lighter grays are still there. And all the color is still there. So how can I clean that up? Well, first I'm going to hit Command D to deselect. Whenever you select something, it stays selected until you deselect or select something else. Now I'm going to go to Image Adjustments. This is the adjustment we wanted to practice and learn. It's just for lights and darks. So we're going to do Image Adjustments Levels. Levels gives us a histogram. This is not an adjustment layer. This is not an adjustment to a clipping mask. This is directly affecting the pixels in that rasterized layer, which is the most memory efficient way to do it. The white here shows me I don't have any white in the image anymore. I've erased it all, right? But I've got lots of light grays. And then I have some dark grays. And then I've got a lot of black. So what I want to do is push that white slider. I know this is kind of zoomed in but push that white slider until it is all bright white. Right? If I go too far, it's going to start to eat into my black. So 
I'm going to push it about halfway, and then I'm going to push my black slider up so those, all those dark grays turn to black. And now I hit OK. So what's the difference there? I can always go back a step in my history or do Command-Z. It turned all of those grays into whites, right, and all the dark grays into black. And it made my, my red and yellow colors a lot more intense. Now what I can do is select those whites again with contiguous unchecked and then delete. And then it gets rid of everything except the black and the color. You can see that checkerboard coming through. How can I get rid of that little color logo? Well, it can just be as simple as using the lasso, which is a selection tool right underneath the move tool. I just want the regular lasso. And then I can just click and drag, select around it, then hit delete. Now let's move on to the next layer. Oh, but before I do that, maybe I don't want this arrangement. Maybe I want to stretch it or rotate it more or flip it. So the other thing I can do with my layers is edit free transform. Free transform is the fastest way to get to all these options. The shortcut for it, both Photoshop and PhotoP will teach you their shortcuts, is option command T. Option Command T. So if I hit Option Command T, it automatically gives me a transform box around the layer that's selected. And now I can do things like this. Scale it down. Hey, Randall. And I can rotate it. Now I wanted to show you this because look what happens when I scale it down. Something that was off of the, the picture plane, cropped off the edge, was part of the white paper. So when you adjust things within the pixel space, it only adjusts them there. It doesn't go beyond those edges. So if I change its shape, like if I hold down shift and I stretch it this way, and maybe rotate a little bit, and maybe grow it, that white might still exist. Now my favorite way to transform, and I want everyone to play with this, is to right click inside an active transform box and then use warp. It's kind of in a category all its own. You can play with all of them, but warp is my favorite because it makes it like cookie dough that you can push and pull in different directions. It splits it into this nine square grid and you can pull at all parts of that grid to turn it into the shape you want. Now there's still some white showing, so now I'm gonna use my magic wand, gonna click on that white and delete. So that's one clean black edited layer. What haven't I done? I haven't erased anything yet. And I, I certainly will, but before I do that, let's look at some of these other layers and clean them up. So I've got this coloring book page. First thing I need to do is rasterize it because if I don't and I try to delete things like these names, whoops, I was in the wrong layer. You gotta be on the right layer. It's gonna give me this warning, right? because it's a smart object and the smart object can't be deleted from until it's rasterized. So I'm going to right click and rasterize. Be very, what's the word? Very aware of your power to do that, of making that choice. You only want to rasterize it when it's already big enough, right? Because the smart object is the full resolution file. You bring that in, it stays full resolution no matter what size you choose to make it but when you rasterize it, it locks those pixels in at that pixel dimension. So you grow it and then you rasterize it. And always a good idea, this was another mistake I saw a lot and we're gonna see it in the beginning, always check your image size. The very minimum this can be is eight by 10 inches by 300 pixels per inch. That doesn't happen without the intention to set it up the right way. All right. Now I'm gonna select all the whites with that magic wand and contiguous turned off and I'm gonna hit delete. And again, if I hit option command T, I get my free transform box or I can go to edit free transform and it will show me that shortcut. But what's great about that free transform box, whoops, option command T, not shift command T or I'll open a new tab, is that I can rotate it all 
and I can right click and I can try some of these other settings like distort, which lets me pinch and pull it from one corner. Or my favorite, warp, which is really good for line art because it can curve lines, can get things to fit on the page in an interesting way. Hit return. Now, if I zoom in on this, I have black lines, but if I want to make sure all of it's nice and clean, I go to image adjustments, just like before, and levels. And then I have a lot of grays in there that I can darken by moving that black slider. And then the whites, I can decide if I want to push those brighter or not, but I've already erased the white, so I think I'm pretty safe just darkening all the black. All right. Now, there is some white that was left over on the edge, right? So I want to get that and then delete it. And then if there's anything that's kind of cropped off the edge that I don't like, this is a pet peeve of mine, I might just use my lasso and while it's rasterized, I might just find a nice curve in there. And might find my own chunk to delete out by selecting it and then hitting delete. If I want to round this out, I can do that. And then just hit delete. And I'm just using my finger with a trackpad, but you can use a tablet for that. You can use your mouse. Same thing with this. This feels pretty arbitrary. So I might keep that one line, but these rest, I'm going to make it a little bit squiggly. Especially all these pinstripes in the bottom of the saxophone. Loop it around and delete. So now I've got two layers. And you see how those are kind of working together a little bit. But I might want to erase some of those notes that are floating on top. Let's go to the next layer. That's two out of five. This one I'm going to rasterize. It's already a good size, but I need to go to image adjustments and make it a lot darker. So make sure that it's black and white. They're kind of moving those close together. You can always check that by zooming in with Command Plus. So these are rougher lines. This is fan art, not like finished vector line art. But that is nice and clean and black and white now. Use the magic wand, select all the whites, delete. See that checkerboard underneath. And then I can use my lasso. It's rasterized and I can delete out the name there. But if I hit Option Command T to transform it and I shrink it or I warp it, you see those whites will still come in. So I'm going to warp it, play with this shape a little bit. I think it's funny to mix Charlie Parker with fan art from the anime Cowboy Bebop, which uses a lot of his music. And remember, this is a, a line art jumble, so you don't need to have an up, a down, an orientation. So you can just totally flip these in whatever way you think is visually interesting. You don't have to, but that can give you more freedom to make it your own composition. This is an aesthetic composition. We're not trying to preserve the narrative. I don't need you to be able to recognize any of these characters. And for legality reasons, it's better if you can't recognize them. Just like Arturo Herrera removing the eyes and the faces from, from the Disney characters he uses. So I might go ahead and use my lasso and immediately get rid of the eyes. And anything that's too locked into this one reference. And if I'm anti-smoking, I can get rid of the cigarette. Because I'm just using the line quality. Hmm. I don't have an answer for that. I Is there something? I did not ask you. All right. So now I'm going to use my magic wand. And I'm going to click on the white. That's there again because it was floating off the edge before I shrunk it and delete. And now I have three layers that are all clean black line art. Okay, here's the challenging one of my five. This is the one that's in full color. I wanted to show you how you can get black line art from anything as long as there's lines in it, right? Like illustrations, comics. So first, what do I need to do? I need to rasterize it. Right click on the layer, rasterize. Now I can delete out. 
before I start trying to delete, because if I select just the blue, it will only select.